Well, I suppose I could say uh, Happy Tuesday, everyone. And, I mean, yeah, I, I will. In fact, I just did. But it's been done. Yesterday we uh, we had my grandmother's funeral. Um, there's definitely a lot to unwind for this. Uh, I guess there's no better way to start than shortly after I cut the camera yesterday. So I get to my car. And by the way, like, Seriously, yesterday was like one giant low, high, and active kindness all rolled into one. It really was. Because I could, because there was a lot of sad stuff that happened yesterday, low. A lot of good stuff that happened yesterday, high. And, you know, my active kindness was obviously helping out whenever I could. So, I guess there's no better way to start than again after I cut camera. So, I get to my car after everything's ready to go, and I actually have a flat tire. Not like torn to shreds flat, flat or anything, but like, I need to get air stat. So I did. Um, now I know, unfortunately, I, I was worried I wouldn't get to a place that you know, had free air fast enough, so I had to pay like two dollars and fifty cents for air. I'm sorry. Can we just stop for a minute and say that like air and water should be free? Those are like those are like illegal human rights or something. <laughs> but whatever. Um. So I got the tires fixed, and I immediately had to the church in Corning, and. You know, I get there pretty early, you know, I greet people as they're walking in, you know, um, lots of people send their condolences, which reminds me, for those of you who've been, you know, wishing me condolences for the last, probably since Thursday, um, I mean, I really couldn't thank you guys enough. I mean, saying that you're sorry for someone's loss Again, I said this. I said this before, but it bears repeating. It may only be just a simple act of kindness, but it's a simple act of kindness that really does go a long way. And I really couldn't thank you guys enough for the support. So um, the service starts. Um, you know, it's your typical Catholic church funeral. Um, my brother had the first reading. I had the second one. Um, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm heartless or anything, but I definitely felt sad, but I didn't cry. I almost did, though. Wish... Believe it or not, came at the end of the service when my father had a few words. Only twice in my entire life have I ever actually seen my father not bawling out crying or anything, but definitely on the weepy side. I mean, I've never seen my own father cry. Not like, you know, not like, not like, like that. Like, how I felt on July 29th, that was me crying, absolutely. Like, not, not like that. The first time I saw him act like that was when my grandmother had turned 80. And, uh, he had a few words to say. And obviously the second time was yesterday. Um... I mean, my mother, my grandmother was a very spiritual Catholic woman, so of course Ave Maria was sung. Why wouldn't it be? Um, 
After the service at church, we drove uh, towards the St. Mary Cemetery, where uh, she was uh, put in the uh, mausoleum with uh, my uh, Aunt Kathy, which actually, I was really worried about that because for those of you who don't already know, my aunt died in 2018. And honestly, regarding my aunt's death, I've had a lot of problems with that. The kind of problems that legitimately infuriate me. And one of those things is the fact that about a year to the day after my Aunt Kathy died, I went to St. Mary's Cemetery toward the mausoleum where she, w where she was supposed to be. And keep in mind, this was just, a, oh, it was under a year, because here's the thing. When we put my Aunt Kathy in the mausoleum, it was on the day of my birthday and everybody forgot my birthday. Yeah. That's one of many reasons why I'm infuriated about it. But, and I am not kidding, everyone seriously did forget my birthday. Um, here's the thing, I get to the mausoleum, I look for, um, you know, my, uh, where my aunt would be. They didn't mark the grave. It'd been almost a year since we put her in the mausoleum and they didn't mark it. Eventually, they did mark it after we made several... Seriously, it actually took them, like, years to finally get the grave marked. And I'm sure they have, like, a system. But here, all the while, I'm worried that, like, God forbid we actually... You know, one of my grandparents dies because they're going to the mausoleum, too. Like, what if we open where the marker is supposed to be and my aunt's not there? I mean, again, they have a system, and obviously everything was fine. But it makes you really worry that, like, such negligence could lead to something that catastrophic. But it didn't happen. Um, everybody got to keep a white rose for a namesake and stuff like that. And, um, a lot of people said that, then uh, we got to the, um, at the party at my folks' place where there was way too much food. Like, we got pizza from Vanilio's and Foxes all the way in Campo because we know the guy who owns Foxes. Um, there was a vegetable plate, a ve vegetable platter, a cheese platter, fruit platter. Um, as I mentioned, pizza. There's also boneless wings, um, salad, chips. Like, it was unbelievable. Um, uh, cookies. Um, and, you know, just seeing everyone smile and having a good time, even after an event like this, you know, it, it definitely puts things into perspective. I mean, I was absolutely happy to see all that, but I just wish it was under better circumstances. And, um... I guess doing all these videos um, definitely helps with my public speaking because a lot of people really complimented how well I did the reading in church yesterday. Which, I mean, honestly, in terms of what I would like to do, I mean, stuff like voiceover is my number one thing. But, you know, I wouldn't mind doing like broadcasting or announcing or, or public speaking. I could do that. I think I do pretty well with that. Um, and then, well, I actually had to go back to Corning for a meeting, but the rest of the evening just consisted of, you know, being with my family, you know, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, my nephews. Um, actually, uh, my brother and sister-in-law ordered Chinese for everybody for dinner. Which uh, is great. And a Chinese in a good while from uh, Shanghai Express and Big Flats. Which I really gotta get to putting Shanghai Express on the color list. I mean, I just like how it's, I mean, that's easily the Chinese food place I've been to the most in my life. Um, 
I mean, there's a few Chinese places. So I actually live, there's literally like a Chinese place, like a good hundred feet from where I live. Yeah, it's been a while since I've actually, well then again, I'm so terrible. There's like a whole bunch of stuff I order from like that place. I get like General Tso's chicken and pepper steak and like egg rolls or actually cabbage vegetable rolls or whatever. Um, dumplings, wonton soup. Um, like Mongolian beef. Like Chinese food is one of my things, bro. I mean, I, I would still say Italian food is what, probably my all time favorite. But Chinese food really isn't that far behind. And I know it's, oh, it's Americanized Chinese. Actually, it's, um, and I actually learned this watching at Andrew Zimmern. Uh, the American style Chinese food that we know of today was invented by, um, a uh, Hawanese man from like the, ha the Huan province in uh, China or something. Basically, like, yeah, it was, chi yeah, it was made in America. But it was a Chinese person that actually invented it in the first place, if that makes sense. So, yeah, if that's, again, that's just what I heard. I mean, I'm not, I am no expert on that, on that sort of thing. Maybe somebody can, you know, let me know. Uh, it was just a good day all around. Oh, oh. Sorry, very tired. Um, I think since my grandmother died, the one thing that's really gotten me most about her passing is I can hear her voice so vividly in my head. And you know what? It's the same thing with both of my grandparents that also passed away on my mom's side. And both of my aunts on my father's side, for that matter. And my great aunts, too. Actually, my grandmother just joined them now, so all three sisters are together again. I visited their grave sites, too, yesterday. Um, let's see. Where, I, where was I? Right. Like, every single person I've ever known from my family who's passed away, I can vividly hear their voices in my head. Now, I say going crazy. Like, if I can just close my eyes and think of, and just think of them. Like, I can immediately picture, like, what they sound like in my head. And I think that's what's been getting to me about, you know, the deaths in my family. Is, I am never going to hear those voices ever again. I mean, it's sad to the point where I have to stop and think, oh, that's, that's awful. But it hasn't been, it, but not quite sad enough where, like, I immediately stop and, like, take a second, like, crying thing and stuff. Yeah, I'm saying stuff way too much in this video, I'm sorry. Uh... You know, I'm thinking of a better way to say it. It's sad, but it's not debilitating for me. Like, I feel awful, but not so awful that I can't get through my day. I mean, I definitely think about it. And seriously, I legit almost did cry when my dad was speaking. So... I guess what's that, what's that going to say about me when I have to do that for my parents? Well, my brother did say that I got my folks for probably another 25 years or so. Then he and I are all we got left. Yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way, though. So, um... If anyone, if anyone in my family is watching this at the moment, um, I hope this all finds you well. I'm sure a bunch of you all got home safe and sound from the festivities. Some of them came all the way from Ohio. 
So, but I'm sure Mushroom King got home safely. Um, anyone else in my family who's watching this and couldn't make it, um, I hope this finds you well and know that, you know, the service was beautiful. You know, my grandmother, kind of, seriously, my grandmother didn't even have any calling hours. Also, to a dear friend of mine who said she actually wanted to go to the service, but she just couldn't find a babysitter because her actual babysitter's off for the week. Thank you. I know that you couldn't come, but it really is the thought that counts. And I can't thank you enough for that. Plus, I'm going to be seeing you on Sunday anyway, so. It's not like, you know, it's not like I'm never going to see him. In fact, actually, on my way back, I stopped at Rita's and I saw my friend's husband. So, yeah. It was... It was an eventful day, not for the greatest of circumstances, but you know what? For every, for why we were all there, it honestly went about as great as you would expect. It was a somber day, but it really was, rather than mourn for the loss, how about we celebrate life? And that's what we want to do. Seriously, like, um, there was like a nice slideshow about my grandma that we had, like during the party, and it was wonderful. I mean, I'm not allowed to post it, so you'll never see what it is, unfortunately. But no, it was it was very nice, very very nice. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, look. One of the reasons why we have such the attitude of death that we have is because as soon as someone we know dies, our lives change forever. And that's what happened. Doing some math, man. 34 years, three months, And 17 days. Actually, no, wait. It was a 10th, so. 13 days. One week and, actually one week and six days. So yes, 34 years, three months, one week, and six days. That's how long my grandmother was a part of my life. You know, I'm sure a day will come where I'll have lived longer without her in my life than with her, but I'm never going to forget her. And that's about all I have to say about that. I hope you all liked this video. If you didn't like it, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media. Um, at the moment, I'm doing fine. and. I'm very humbled I got to share this with all of you today. I'm hopeful that we have a wonderful Tuesday, bright sunny day outside. I think it's going to be a good day weather-wise. Um, if any of you guys ever want to talk, you know I'm going to be here to listen. So uh, take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.